Hello, Bill Maher. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Hey, listen. <laughs> Sorry, I know I just met you. But before I forget, because I get to drinking and I do. Okay. Please tell your mother. I'll go. She loves you. I, I, that's, she, that was the first thing she said to me when I told her I was coming in today. Please, again, before I forget, because I know I will, I tend to do it. But I had such a great time when she was on Real Time. She I, did as well. Nothing pleased me more than to kind of fucking, you know, come to her defense. Yes. And, you know, we texted a few times. And, you know, I always let friendships evolve. Yeah. You know, I don't force them. But just tell her, yes. Uh, I could tell I liked her right away. I knew she, I would, yeah. and she's my kind of person. And she, she was very grateful for... So uh, we'll all get together sometime before we're dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? Can I get you a drink? Uh, I'm good. I've, I've got one right here. Cheers. Not an alcohol drink. No, I do not drink, but I, I've got a That's so funny. Running. Like, I always say the ki kids always, like, do the opposite of their parents, <laughs> right? Usually, right? I mean... It's a rule of thumb. Don't you think that... Is something to do with it? Yeah, but the irony is, though, we have, I have been totally fucking wasted in your presence before, so. You have? Oh, yeah. I don't remember it, because I must have been Probably, wasted in yeah. my presence. Yeah, in my in my youth, I used to frequent uh, a certain mansion in the, uh. The Playboy yeah. mansion? Yeah. Yeah, so. And I was there? What was yeah. I, serving drinks or something? I don't remember uh, being at the Playboy I, mansion. I don't know. So, you're talking about the parties. The parties, Yeah. yeah. People, I, I say that because people th <laughs> thought I like lived there or something like <laughs> Jimmy Khan, I think in the 70s. Right? And I, of course, I only went to the big parties. Because they were like, fun. Because they were fun. Yeah. And it was like four times a year. Yeah. Right? You know, but of course, every time you go, they get a picture of you. Yep. So it does look like you live there. Pretty Back much. when people actually read Playboy magazine. Yeah. And saw it. Yeah. And then, and then camera phones ruined everything. Why? I don't know. It just it felt like when like it like the Playboy Mansion was fun, and then when everyone had iPhones, it no longer been it no longer became about like going to the Playboy Mansion and having fun. It just became about people taking pictures of the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, I remember in the <laughs> the later days. And of course, there's what I call the dead ball era. Mm -hmm. You know what that is in baseball? No. Okay, so you're fucking like half British or some shit. Cricket, so you don't sure. get these <laughs> these references, but the dead ball era in baseball was like before Babe Ruth came along. Okay. They called it the dead ball era because no one hit home runs. Mm. Like Ty Cobb would lead the league with nine. You know, first of all, the ball was different. Okay. Uh, that was part of it, and they just played it a different, scrappier kind of game. And then Babe Ruth changed everything, uh, but. For me, the Playboy Mansion, the dead ball era, was like when he he got married. And then they had the... By the way, did you see the sign? I did, yeah. Playmates at play. That was the one that you... was on the driver. When you, you made out. the cut. When Can you, you believe I wound up with that? How did you get that? Auction. Shut up. And it wasn't that much money. Wow. Okay. Under 10 grand for that iconic sign. Yeah. I'm, I bet you it's... Worth a lot more already. Yeah. I think they, they, but when he died, they auctioned off, like, <laughs> the catalog, and I'm not an auction person, but somehow they, I guess they figured because... Because you live there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because I live there, that I would want to see this shit. And it was, I mean, it was like everything the guy ever wore. I mean, his fucking jockstrap, his socks, his, I mean, it's like... When they cleaned out the closet, they cleaned out the closet. Wow. And it was, you know, a lifetime, you know, his cars, his, you know. Yeah. I'm sure there was the, you know, the silicon they had lying around <laughs> that they used in the lab and the <laughs> stuff they used to bolt the tits onto the real housewives. You know, <laughs> but when he got, Matt, when was he? He was like 60-something. Yeah. And then, so the, that sign came down and it was children at play. Because the kids were young. Yeah, the, the new era. Are you around that age of Marston and Cooper? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm within a few years of Cooper, I think. He's a great guy. Yeah. Looks yeah. identical to his father. He does, yeah. Like a clone, like almost a I mean, a, a, yeah. a sp spooky. And he's very much like his father, cerebral, mm -hmm. you know, kind of quiet, um, not uninterested in pussy. <laughs> but he's married. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Was he know. getting into politics at one point? He's he's engaged. Yeah. That I'll say that. Um, I think he's an interesting guy. But anyway, I think the dead ball <laughs> era was when 
He was married. The that sign came down. Children at play went up. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was like it's like when Vegas tried to be family friendly. It's like yeah, it's the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, don't be the opposite of what you are. Exactly. Yeah, know your brand. <laughs> know your brand. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Children right. at play at the Playboy Mansion just doesn't right. quite hit the same. Right. Your father doesn't want to go out there and sing, it's impossible, <laughs> tell a baby not to cry. Exactly. Bite the head off a bat. <laughs> it's just or impossible. <laughs> and tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give them what they want, you know, and that's the, uh, yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, so that was like, and then he came out of, uh, well, the marriage. Yeah. And then he came out, and that must have been when you... Yeah, like uh, early two thousands, I started solid. Right, I think. The... Right, because he was, I think, newly single, like late nineties. Yeah. Remember, he had that weird thing with the twins. Yeah. And some. <laughs> and, well, he had like multiple. Oh, oh we, have... well, it kept shifting. I'm, I have and all then the, with the show. It I have was all like... the Christmas cards, and it's like one year it's like him with three platinum blondes, and the next year it's like five, and then it's like seven, yeah. and then it's back down to four. You know, it was like you I could... don't get why he didn't just move to Utah, where it would have been totally socially acceptable at that point. He could have married all of them. He didn't want to marry them. No. I mean, that, that would take the fun out of it. <laughs> it's like True. these, these, these uh, I hear about these thruples, you know, that uh, you're gen millennials. Yeah. Like, remember that? Katie Hill, do you know who that is? No, who's she's, that? She's a con she was in Congress. Oh, that's right. She was in my friend's district in like Valencia. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, local. Yeah. And like 32. Yeah. You remember? Her? Yeah, and she had the full throuple going on with like a, a member of her like staff and Right. Yeah, that was weird. And I was like But it was like a marriage, you know, they were living together and yeah, yeah. you know, I was like leave it to millennials to take the fun out of threesomes with a lot of rules about who gets to do the dishes, you know? <laughs> but, but, uh, oh, why are we bringing that up? Oh, the three, uh, half with his uh, harems. I just thought, you know, I loved him, but, you know, now a lot of stuff is coming out. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm, who knows what's true. Um, it was, it was a different era. That doesn't excuse no. uh, some of the things that, you know, may have gone on i don't know uh but he was certainly seemed like he wanted to you know be a gentleman yeah to, uh, but i don't know what went on behind closed doors well yeah and that's that's the thing you never know what goes on behind anyone's closed doors and right but exactly. there is a i i always you know that is that strange thing of oh well you know he's dead so he, how does he defend exactly you know what are we gonna dig him up and yell at him yeah it's like, I mean, the guy lived a long time. There was plenty of time to turn around and be like, hey, this asshole did this. Yes, and, and also a lot of the women who were his girlfriends and hung around, they do have, I mean, I, I, I certainly met a lot of them. They were around. I mean, they weren't like embittered and, I mean, I guess there's some and maybe they have legitimate stories, yeah. but I don't think it was from him. He yeah. may have, people, Bill Cosby was there a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't think Hef was preparing the ketamine or whatever. <laughs> okay. but, but he was, you know, it was a laissez-faire. Anyway, I always thought in his later years, it was less cool than his early years when he never left, which yeah. was what made it so cool. Like, I don't have to leave. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes to me. Everybody comes to the Playboy Mansion, especially the Chicago one. Yeah. And then you'd see him at, like, the Garden of Eden nightclub, like, well, I'm here. How fucking cool. <laughs> you know, it's like, we're at a nightclub. Yeah. A shitty fucking <laughs> disco where douchebags are roofing chicks. You yep, know, and spending 10 grand on a table. It's I like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was even that. But, so you went to those parties. And, yes. And... And you were single, obviously? Uh, yeah, 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 at that time, sure. I had a lot of fun. It was great. And then you got married? Uh, I got married in 2012, and then divorced oh. in 2018, oh. and then engaged now. Oh, yeah. so you like being married, obviously. Uh, and I guess it would turn out so, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's not, that's not exactly a ring. No, I. You know what it is. I. 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 I my. My first. Honey, it would turn out so. The way you say it with that British lilt. It, I, how could anyone deny it? It's charming. I mean, I'm sure. Uh, but some people, it's just their personality. Yeah. They like they don't like to wake up alone. I would. But I was like King Bachelor for the longest time. A what? I, I, I King Bachelor. I had. Really? A, I had a great run. I had a good like twelve year run. You know, just like tearing it up and. Uh, and um you know is it wrong i'm still doing no it's great like hats off to you like like captain my captain it's like go for it no. no it's not like that but like it is it is i often think of it like you know yeah when you're a, a bachelor like that and really just militant about it yeah it's kind of like halloween you know like you're getting a lot of candy. <laughs> and then, like, if somebody says to you, well, you know, there's no law that says tomorrow can't be Halloween, too. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's so true. I mean, I I mean, like in the year that I was single between, you know, le you know, divorcing my ex and meeting my new fiance, I had a lot of fun. And then I realized, you know what? I kind of enjoy trusting this person a bit. You know, it's, oh. that, it's that weird thing of like and then I'm like dealing with that kind of. I tell you what, the dating apps I think are kind of amazing in the sense that like there's like documentation of what the interaction is with the person. It's not like you know in the kind of Me Too era. What do you mean? Because well, I'm not, I'm not of this era. Well, I am not of your people, <laughs> your millennial people. I I so this is all you have to explain. Uh, I liked, I liked this, I liked the safety of it in the sense that like hey, I matched with this person on a dating app. It's very clear that okay. I'm on a dating app, she's on a dating app. There's no confusing about what we're doing here. Go back even before that. Mm -hmm. You pick up your phone. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's very and much... an app. It's very much like ordering an Uber. <laughs> you, you've got the magic light box in your hand. Yes. It is like ordering an Uber, right? It, it, oh, oh, I see. So you're just... You're going I like, mean, I like you, I don't like you. Of or, course. Yeah. Are you talking about Tinder? No, I, I, did, I did Raya. I met, I met my fiance. But isn't Raya. that like... That's Tinder like, for like the cool kids. Yeah, it's like exclusive Tinder. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. They tried to get me on that. I was like, you. Bill, you'd have you, a lot of success on that. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I will, that, that will never. I'm not looking for success. And <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, it's just, ugh. first of all, the idea in this uh, world where Everyone is faking. They're masters at faking who they are and what they look like. Mm -hmm. You can't even get what they actually look like. No. But I'm going to make a date with someone? Ba no, I don't think <laughs> I so. Could, see, I could talk with <clears throat> you the whole strategy. The strategy is you meet someone, you chat to them on the app, and then you agree to have a little FaceTime combo. So then you can see, all right, which there's always a 20% scale. They either look 20% better than their picture or 20% worse. Wow. <laughs> what kind of an idiot makes himself look worse? Uh, well, no, they make themselves look worse and they, well, they end up looking worse than they really are. But then they but just, it, you know, they can take bad pictures. But if thing. you can't make yourself look better, uh, oh. then you're, that should say something about their IQ, yeah. who you're going out with. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you did that. So you did that for a year. Yeah, and then met met my now fiance. And like the there were just women who uh, knew you from your public persona and thought, oh, that's a cool guy to to go out with, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I could see that. You are a cool guy to go out with. You know, you're very, well, you're, you know, you're very. First of all, like for the crazy upbringing you had, I see you on the MTV show. Mm -hmm. How old were you then? Oh, started when like I was a, like 15 or 16. Yes, I mean, which is, what a tender age to be on a reality show. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing you're not on top of a tall building with a high-powered rifle <laughs> or, or some shit, or, <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, you came out very normal. Yeah, I think, I mean, it was, I think, uh, you know, a stint in rehab and then kind of staying sober and realizing there's a, a whole world out there outside of L.A. But isn't that de rigueur for everyone in your coterie? Yeah, pretty much. I'm getting this just from euphoria, but I, <laughs> I think it's the normal progression. Yeah. No, I don't think that's that weird. But it's a, what I was saying when you first walked in about, like, kids rebel. Mm -hmm. Whatever your parents are, you don't want to be that. I remember I was once with um, Ray Don Chung. You know who Ray Don Chung is? No. Oh, wow. That's sad. Um, 
She's uh, the daughter of Tommy Chong. Okay. Yep. Of Cheech and Chong. Yep. And she had a very fine acting career. Yeah. Um, she probably has kids now and stuff, but you'd recognize her. She was in some really good movies, and I, I don't know why we were in, I don't know, and we, I certainly wasn't dating her. I would have loved to, but I don't <laughs> think I was in her league, but we were some, for some reason in the back of a car giggling with some other people, and I remember she said, my father was so disappointed when I told him I stopped smoking pot. And it was this, it's like, yeah, whatever the parent does, the kid wants to do the opposite. Well, at least just, one of them. Right. You know? Why? You, you, your siblings are? Oh, no. It's just, I, you know, it's usually, you know, the, you always get the, you know, my my sister had a, both sisters have had kind of foray into, you know, went right. to the music route and tried to do that. And I was always like, no, never yeah, doing that. The Osborne show was a little like the Munsters. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. A little bit Munstery. Yeah. I mean, we had the we had the Adams family analogy, the monsters. We had it all. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was like the crazy thing is we just passed the twenty year anniversary of when it aired. Right. Just, I remember it was huge. Yeah. It made MTV its second. You know, it the MTV music obviously, but when they went into programming, that was yeah. a com that was the show that stamped them as oh now that it's this different but also successful network. Yeah. And then I think Jersey Shore came yep. soon after that. They had a time there when they were the hot network uh, without, it. without what their original brand was to get back to that. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. So, um, but do you think you're, you're uh, I mean, where are you now with the family? Good? Yeah, yeah, great. Everybody's good, right? Yeah, everyone's good. You, you know? never, you were never like bitter that like, oh, you put me on that show. No? <laughs> no, you I wasn't. Glad because for, cause for me, it was like, I did the show and, I, you know, I got paid handsomely for it. And then when the show right. ended, it was like, you couldn't, or what do you want to do now? And I kind of fell into doing a lot of travel shows in England and I traveled the world for six years straight. And, really? Oh yeah, I went everywhere. Traveled the world for six years straight? Pretty much, yeah. I wasn't in one place for more than six weeks. Oh, but... buddy. Where'd yeah. you go? Oh, man. I went to... The only continent I didn't hit was Antarctica. Went... Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. I was actually... I was just talking about... I, I drove... Were you just using the money you made? No, I, I, got, I made it... I was making travel TV shows. Oh, you were making... Right, of course. Yeah. So I was doing... I did a show called Adrenaline Junkie, and I... I mean, uh, New Zealand, uh, South right. America. I, dr I drove to Mongolia from London once. That was fun. <laughs> that was a long drive. Okay, you can't fool me. You can't, I guess, with the channel. Yeah. Okay, so the channel yeah. into France. France. France yeah. into Central Europe, Central yeah. Europe into oh, through Eastern Ukraine. Europe, through yeah. Ukraine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And where you go through the stands, yep. Kazakhstan. Yeah, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. And then China. A uh, little bit into China. And, a little, then, yeah. and you wound up in Ulaanbaatar. Yep. Yeah. How was Ulaanbaatar? So when I was there, it was kind of, I guess they had just opened up a lot of the mining. And so a lot of money was flooding in. A lot of Australian and American miners were over there. I mean, how are the gay clubs? Oh, the, <laughs> they were real pumping. <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> is there such a thing? Uh, I'm sure there is. There was really? a lot of undergroundness. You kind of get that vibe. I'm, okay. I mean, you're always, I mean, it is uh, a Muslim country. Uh, no. Mo I, Mongolia? Mon I don't believe no? it is. I, actually, you know what? It, I wouldn't be surprised if it I, was, but. I think it is. Okay. Um, I never heard, I never came across many mosques or you didn't hear the call to prayer or anything when I was there. Uh, um, but it, it could be, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Usually I would... It yeah. it was very, like, when I was there, and this is early 2000s, it was like uh, the they were still in that post-Soviet era, like, time yeah. warp. Where, well, like, I'm sure they still are. Yeah, there was, like, yeah. buildings half-built and Fair. big giant statues of whatever. Fairbanks, uh, Fairbanks Alaska is, is in the same era. <laughs> I, I, I played there once. Was, really? I loved it. It was so great. I played two cities in Alaska, like, 10 years ago. One was um, Fairbanks, which I think is the big city. Yeah. I don't think it's the capital. The capital might be Juneau, I think. And yes, it even, is. You can't even get to it. You I mean, you need like fly a, or a boat. almost a dog sled to get to fucking capital of Alaska. But Fairbanks, oh, and Fairbanks, and what's another big... The, uh, Anchorage. Oh, okay, Anchorage is what I'm thinking of. Fairbanks is, was the first one. That was like a Western show. Seriously, yeah. it was like outside. There was a. It was raining. They didn't care. 
They stood outside in the mud. Um, I remember walking through mud outside to get from wherever the dressing room was to, yeah. to the stage. It was fantastic. I mean, I, I and they were, you know, enthusiastic. Whoever comes to do this show. Yeah. But then Anchorage was like the land that time forgot. It was the 70s. Everything at the restaurants, the hotel, everything looked like it must have been, I don't know, when the oil money yeah. started or stopped or whatever, for whatever reason. Yeah. But it, it, Alaska is interesting. I mean... There, you'll see a moose walking down the street. Oh yeah, and it's and you gotta you gotta run from those things. Everybody's they will kill you. Everybody's got a gun right in their car. Yeah, in case the moose attack. Yeah, exactly. Or the grizzly comes poking around. We are supported by Signal Wire. Remember Back to the Future Part Two? All the crazy cool tech they had, like power lacing shoes, auto drying jackets, and a dog walking drone, and that was set in 2015. Well. It's halfway through 2022. The future is officially here, and not only are we still waiting on those gadgets, but we don't even have video chat apps that work reliably or that don't slow down or crash our devices. That's where SignalWire comes in. SignalWire is an advanced cloud platform for building next-gen communication experiences. Tired of Zoom? So is literally everybody. Zoom is so slow that I'm shocked it even caught Jeffrey Tubin masturbating. With SignalWire, you can create your own video communication product with far better audio and video quality that actually uses less bandwidth and doesn't slow down your users' devices. And with SignalWire, you can completely customize the user experience and integrate it within an existing application or website with ease. Most importantly, you don't have to be a genius to figure it out. Whether you're a developer, product builder, or just someone with a cool idea, SignalWire offers APIs, SDKs, and even copy and paste code snippets to help make your vision a reality. Fast. Visit SignalWire.com random to sign up for a free account and get an additional 5,000 video minutes for testing. Go to SignalWire.com random and build what's next in real-time communications. Go to signalwire.com slash random. We are supported by Wine Enthusiast. In Greek mythology, Dionysus, son of Zeus and his mistress, invented wine while living on an ancient mountain with hundreds of nymphs. He had to because all those nymphs did was talk his ear off. But even the Greeks knew that summer is the time for sharing a nice glass of wine with friends. And whether you're living on a mountain with a bunch of nymphs or just hanging with friends, the summer heat and sunlight can spoil your wine and your good times if it's not properly stored. So now it's the time to get those bottles out of boxes or off your countertops and protect them with a wine fridge from Wine Enthusiast. Wine Enthusiast designs and offers the largest selection of wine coolers for every drinker, every budget and every size collection, from six to 600 bottles. Plus, expert wine storage consultants are available by phone to help you find the right fit for all your needs. Wine Enthusiast is the premier destination for the wine lifestyle, offering an incredible selection of unique wine accessories, glassware, furniture, wine storage, gifts, and more. I love wine enthusiasts, and I'm not just saying that because they sent some amazing custom club random glassware for me and my guests to use. Visit wineenthusiast.com or text the code RANDOM to 511511 to check out all of Wine Enthusiasts' summer savings. Text RANDOM to 511511. Text RANDOM to 511511 today. Certain exclusions may apply. You may receive up to one additional text. Text fees may apply. Text stop to opt out. I'm sure there are lots of those uh, post-Soviet states, countries now. Yeah. That I'm, I bet are still locked into that era. Yeah, Kazakhstan was Kazakhstan. Totally right. I mean, that was because there's, there's a little more money in Kazakhstan, so but it it was still just like. And you speaking of weed, you drive down the streets in Kazakhstan and you will see huge fields of weed. It just grows naturally there. And they just leave it because it's just everywhere, but it's really frowned upon to smoke it. So no one does. And why don't they sell it? They don't. They just leave it. It's crazy the amount of weed you see growing in Kazakhstan. But they must know that there's a market for weed. Someone must. Maybe it's because the penalty for getting caught doing it it's, is prohibited. Yeah. That's I mean, probably what it is. I mean, they just sent the Russians yes, to the murder of, everyone. Lots of so. countries in the world are, you know... <laughs> they're not like 
they're just rougher. Yeah. You know, like if they they'll just kill you for st stuff. Yeah. You know, so people, you know, and people, you know, I was always Saddam's uh, big argument with us is like, you don't like me, but uh, who keeps the shit to your level? Yeah. You know, I, you people have no idea what kind of tinderbox I'm sitting on. Yep. You know, you just yeah. don't know. And you're, you're going to find out. It, yeah. It's kind of true. You know, there's, there's you know, such the thing, that power vacuum so you is never, real. So, I mean, this is why I have never traveled the world like that, because fuck, I don't want to be in places that make me uncomfortable, otherwise known as the world. <laughs> you know, even uh, where I did used to travel, I went to Europe in 2010 and 2015, and I'd been there in, oh, I don't know, 99, uh, first time I think I was in London was 84. Okay. The first time. Um, you know, it, travel, it's, but the last time I did it, I was, where I, 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 last time I, I actually toured in 2015, I did shows in the cities that speak English or yeah. American comics do it. And I enjoyed the experience, but, you know, after you get to like the fifth or the sixth city, it's like, okay. What's so different about Oslo? It's a people, there's a lake, <laughs> there's buildings, there's Town nice. Square, you can't forget yeah, the town yeah, squares, yeah, they're yeah, all over Europe. Square, except town <laughs> square. I was like, you know, I could be home. <laughs> well, well, wait, you have quite the compound here, Bill. Why would you ever want to leave? Yeah. <laughs> well, I love this room. This room's pretty cool. Isn't it? Yeah, this is a good, this is a good... Uh... So, I wish we could have the music uh, playing but of course we can't because yeah. we're taping a conversation, but it makes such a difference. Oh, you yeah. know, it goes with everything, but yeah. just imagine it in your head. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys you guys have fun in here. I feel like this is a good... Oh, I, if I, I have for almost 20 years really? before I decided, it's like, well, as long as I'm having fun in here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this way I can summon people I've always wanted to talk to like you. Yeah, well, there we go. Uh, and you answered the subpoena. I did, yep. <laughs> and we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what could be better? What could be a better way to spend Wednesday between like five and seven? I mean, what the fuck are you going to do? On a Wednesday between in the nothing? Talk about the hump of the hump day, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I barely drink anymore, but this is when I allow myself a cocktail or two. Hump you know, of the hump you, day. Yeah. Yeah. But you, and you never miss the. No, I don't. It's never. It's. I mean, listen. There are times. I'll tell you. The only time I miss drinking, is that I. I spend a lot of time outdoors, like climbing, camping, all that stuff. Jeez. At the end of the day, after I've been like climbing with friends, and everyone would sit around the campfire, and everyone would have like a glass of whiskey or a few beers. Only then would I ever miss it. But it's just not. No, I know it doesn't agree with me. I do. I do weird shit when I drink, and it's best that I don't. And you, this relationship, you're. You say so you're engaged. Yep. You think if you went back to it, you'd fuck that up? Oh, probably. I mean, I have a hard time not fucking it up sober, so. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, it, you well, know, relationships are, you know, relationships are amazing when they're good. Right. You know, and, and it's, yeah. and it's, it can be, it's a lot of work, you know, but it's great. See, now it's you rewarding. said the thing that where I'm like, I'm already out. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you had to have had a girlfriend. Of course. Okay. <laughs> of course. Of course. I've had some... Serious relationships. Yeah. Not a lot, but yes, of course. But what you just said, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of work. Four but, words. But and when like, I, but I, when I, 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 can't, I can't now, I, you know, I'm, I'm already just threw in the towel <laughs> right there. We haven't yeah. even started the conversation, doctor. Mm. And I already threw in the towel because you said like the, that you played the trump card right out of the deck. And how do you like, I like my work. Yeah. But it is work, and then I can't have more work after work. <laughs> but I've, I've, my, my kind of thought process is is like, if it's easy, you wouldn't respect it. No, really, that's ridiculous. the stuff that's easy. I don't know. I always find no. That. I love easy. Okay. Well, like with people, I love easy. Yeah. Like I see no virtue. No, I get no boner of any kind, mental or physical, from drama. Or being, oh, yeah. or well, being difficult yeah. or playing hard to get is fucking boring. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> play hard to get, you won't get got. Yeah. You know, I mean, and some guys are different. Yeah. Some guys love that, you know. Yeah. Probably pretty boys. Oh, yeah. You know, whereas guys like us, 
<laughs> we couldn't just like no. get on Rhea. Well, I guess you can. And, yeah, and you know, it worked all right for me. What if you meet a girl named Rhea? That would be very confusing. Yeah, that would be super confusing. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's some layers right there. I bet you people are going to name their kids when they meet on Rhea. I bet you you'll see that. It'll yeah. Be like in 20 years, it'll be a very popular name. Did you see that uh, article Rhea. that came out? The guy, he delivered his baby, his wife had a baby in their car, and they were in a Tesla, and it was like auto-driving to the hospital while he delivered. And they named their kid Carson because he was born in the car. Carson. Oh. That's not the least clever thing I've ever heard from social media, quite frankly. Yeah, I've I got heard. a chuckle out of that. Yeah, I mean, believe me, there's way worse reasons and way stupider names. Yep, there are. I mean, there's, uh, who named their kid Moroccan? Oh. Somebody, and it was like, when I saw it, I'm like, well, Morocco would kind of make sense, but... Moroccan? <laughs> you're implying you're, that your you're, child is? You're, you're using the <laughs> adjectival form. I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, you know, but some celebrities oh, yeah. famously... Go they, with some crazy names. O-M-G. Oh. Sometimes, and I guess the kid... You know, and when it's... Sometimes it's a name that uh, bestows, uh, you know, great grandeur on the child, which I'm not sure is great as a child. Yeah. To name their child king shit or yeah. whatever, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you agree? You know, it's like... Yeah. Don't do that. Like, your kid, if you're, if you're famous and a celebrity and if you're remotely controversial, why are you going to name your kid a name other than, like, something relatively normal? Because that kid's going to experience a bit of trouble at school. And now you're going to give him a weird name. It's just going to get, you know, that kid's going to get the shit kicked out of him. But maybe that's what those, some of these well, kids need. But celebrity marriages are always going to be fraught because the difference between a lot of, not all, but a lot of celebrity marriages and marriages is like, um, how to say it nicely, regular married people don't have that many options. <laughs> but Ben and J-Lo do. You know, and if they want to get together with other people, other people are always trying to get to them. Yep. You know, it's just different. Mm -hmm. I, it's harder. You're just constantly tempted by, you know, the grass is greener on the other side, whereas the guy at the office, it's like, I guess I could leave Gladys and fuck my secretary, but she's no prize either. <laughs> where else do I meet women? And, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, you're kind of like, you don't have that, uh, you know, temptation because, yeah, you know, who's getting with a Kenny shoe salesman? <laughs> <laughs> Someone might. You never know. There could be a fetish. Know, There's but, a fetish for everything these well, days. <laughs> I mean, it happens in movies a lot. People, you know, like very ordinary people get hit on by very extraordinary yeah. women. I don't know. I, I, I guess that happens, uh, but I think it's a movie thing. And I'm look. I hope that the, <laughs> you seem to have a rather cynical, jaundiced view just going into this. <laughs> oh, no. Well, so, you know, you got to like, you got to have a full head of steam, bro, if you're going to make it last at all. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. No, my like, my fiance is fucking awesome. And that's why... Oh, there we go. That's why I chose her, because she's like, we chose each other, I should say. Um, <laughs> I pick <What>? you. <laughs> you are now mine. Bathe her and bring her to my tent. That's what they say in Mongolia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know they have. You know what they have over there? Marriage by capture. Really? Uh, I think Mongolia, absolutely. And definitely Kazakhstan, because oh, yeah. Borat did it, remember? <laughs> yep. Marriage by capture. Mm -hmm. And they sometimes do it in modern day era, I read a story, oh, it probably was five or six, could be 10 years mm -hmm. ago, but you know, 21st century. And uh, they did it to the girl working in the video store. What? I, <laughs> yeah. I love this confluence of the old and the new world. She's working in a video store. You know, that itself is a little out of date. Yeah. But it's not, not bad for God. Yeah, they're doing all right there. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a copy of Lethal Weapon 2 on VHS. That you, <laughs> very uh, exciting the way it's going around. No, and uh, I believe they, the whole bag on the head, I mean, it's marriage by capture. You wow. capture the, remember Borat? Yeah, did it yeah, to yeah. Pam Anderson? Yeah. And uh, that was, that's, from, that's a 
Kazakhstan wow. custom. Wow. And the fact that they still, I mean, it's not a common thing, I don't think. Please, Kazakhstan Board of <laughs> Commerce, I'm not saying you're all going around You're going to lose that sponsorship here. <laughs> but these three knuckleheads did it. Now, of course, we have knuckleheads in our country who yeah. do crazy shit, too. But not marriage by cap. No. <laughs> that one, we have, we have not touched that one yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it, who knows? Anyway... When were we talking about? What, but what my uh, my fiance. No, she's uh, she's. Oh right, she did not capture. Did not capture. No, no, she's she's cool as shit. She's awesome. She's an interior designer. She's oh. awesome with my kids. It's like we just. And you met on Raya. We, yep, we did. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just like it's it's kind of like we're best friends, and we hang out. And she likes doing the same stuff I do. I'm interested in the stuff she does, and. I'm always curious about that one. Uh, the she's my best friend thing. Yeah. I'm not down with that. You're not down with that? My best friend is Jim Vallely, and I you know I that I like to keep it that way. Yeah. And a, a woman can be certainly a best friend, a kind of best friend. Yeah. But that term, to me, I want it. To, it's some some no some positions I want to be uh, have a man okay. because a man can understand another man in a way. No I still woman. have guy best friends. Right. And I I'll, I'll, I do a lot right. of the, the, the guy jokes and all that with them. And, you know, but she's, she's yeah. cool. I like hanging out I with just, her. But it may be, like, almost too much, <laughs> you know, <laughs> time. And, you know, I feel like we freight relationships with so many. Bill, I'm getting the feeling that you don't like being in relationships. <laughs> <laughs> relationships, are, you know what, they're a lot of work. <laughs> That's what fucking relationships are. And I love work. No, um, no, I mean, look, marriage is a lovely institution. I just don't want to live in an institution. Good night, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. But, uh, no, uh, yes, I, obviously I've never gotten married. Because, uh, that's not a coincidence. Um, and it is because relationships are difficult, and I'm basically a loner. I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I need way too much alone time to be in a relationship. Mm. You just cannot starve a person as much as I need to I yeah you know I, my mistress is my work and I that mistress you know never never argues never lets me down <laughs> I've been fortunate because I do a job where I'm you know I, I'm it's my show yeah I run it I'm God in my universe you know yeah I mean I know not to do crazy things and I don't want to do crazy things but HBO is marvelous yeah and that's, that has been their model and why they have been such a success, not just my show, every show. They're, they pioneered that and everybody else finally caught on yeah. and imitated this business model of get people you trust and then let them do their thing and mm -hmm. don't fuck with them with their network notes and the blah, blah. And yeah. for years, they owned that all to themselves as every year they had the best shows and won all the Emmys. And finally, the other networks were like, okay, <laughs> I think I see what they're doing. They're onto something. Right. Find people you trust and let them make the art yeah. that they make. And, you know, HBO has had many flops. John from Cincinnati comes to mind. <laughs> Remember that, John? Yes, I, I do. Mean, and good. You, that means you're experimenting and yeah. trying, and that's what artists do. They sometimes flop. Yeah. <laughs> this could be a giant disaster. <laughs> do you consider yourself a comedian or a TV host or like what? I just did my 12th. Stand-up special. Uh, well, I, I get I that. I consider but, that a comedian. Oh, absolutely. Okay. But like, but you also have a hugely successful TV show that you host. I can't be both. Well, you can. But like, when you wake up, you're like, I'm a comedian. Absolutely. Okay. I wake up a comedian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, because I've never done any kind of show that didn't have good comedy in it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I hate earnest TV. Mm. By earnest, I mean like just, you know, I'm not going to name names, but a lot of cable pundits. Yep. It's a lot of you, sir. Have, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, if you had jokes in here, maybe you could get away with that yeah. attitude. Like everything shitty that happened in the world happened to you personally. Yeah. And, you know, but if you're going to talk about weighty things, yeah. Make it, if you can, funny. Yeah. I mean, that, make it, and, and there is a way you get at truth better when you make something funny. Absolutely. Because peop, laughter is involuntary. Mm -hmm. So anytime people laugh, 
something in their mind is going, oh, there may be some truth in that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's why I get the big bucks. Yeah. And they're, you know. <laughs> and they're in the, they're the bowels of cable. <laughs> 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 and you're on HBO. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the hot summer months are here, and we need to be proactive about keeping our bodies fueled and hydrated. Making personal hydration a priority can help us feel healthier in our everyday lives. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you twice as fast and more efficiently than water alone. Plus, liquid IV products taste great with 10 refreshing flavors like Concord Grape, Lemon Lime, Pina Colada, and Tropical Punch. Liquid IV is perfect first thing in the morning, before a workout, when you feel run down, and especially after a long night out. What's best about it is the easy packaging, and it truly makes you feel better every single day. Liquid IV contains five essential vitamins with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks without all the garbage that's in them. Oh, and here's what's very cool. Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world. For every purchase, they donate a serving to someone in need. To date, Liquid IV has donated over 24 million servings globally. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code RANDOM at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order today using promo code RANDOM at liquidiv.com. Did you know HBO Max had podcasts? Now go even deeper inside your favorite shows with audio companions to some of the most groundbreaking and award-winning shows on television. Listen to HBO Max's new companion podcast for the original series, The Staircase. Each episode, host Nancy Miller sits down with cast and crew, including actors T Colin Firth and Tony Collette, as well as experts to help unpack the science, history, and psychology behind the Michael Peterson case. Stream new episodes of The Staircase on HBO Max and subscribe to The Staircase Podcast on all major podcast platforms. Ghosts. Ghosts. Because it's interesting, and I know you're the guy to talk to about this. Okay. Because, look, I made the movie Religious. I, mean, I have a story I, about that. I, okay, let's hit your story. I had someone very close to me all, at a certain point became a born again. Did a handbrake turn to the right. Oh. And I put on religious religious for them. Oh. And they began to oh, that's fantastic. digress out oh. of the mindset. Thank you for telling yeah. me that. So I've, thank I, you. <laughs> oh, I've, I've heard from, I would say at this point, because that movie's been on for 12, 13 years, um, from so many people, the same kind of story, like in a way that it's so interesting. You, ne I never hear... Uh, you know, I was a, a big uh, conservative and I'm listening to you and uh, now I'm a, a flaming liberal. You never hear people switch their politics, people's politics. They're, but I've heard, I'm telling you, it must be a thousand people who've said, oh, yeah, I, I was religious and I saw that and yeah. boy, you're right, what a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> it's much easier to switch them on God than Mitt Romney. Yeah, it's, it's, really it's kind of odd, right? <laughs> but ghosts. Yes. Again, made religious, kind of known as an atheist, and I am. But I also, in the movie, I say, I preach from the Bible, from the gospel of I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't say, because that's even Richard Dawkins' position. Yeah. Atheist just means not theist. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't mean I have all the answers. And So my issue with this, and I've talked, I think, with somebody else here about this, I know... Too many people who are intelligent people who have a ghost story. Yeah. Some st and and I've like really bore down. Like, were you drunk? Are you, you? No, no. I was not on Xanax. I wasn't drunk. It wasn't Ambien. I wasn't asleep. You know. And it's just interesting that. And I I've always thought anything is possible. We have five senses. I used to say it's it's like five stations on a, on a dial, there are other stations that we don't pick up. I yeah. know there are. I don't yeah. know what they are. Mm -hmm. But we're not pick. And so I'm guessing you're all in on ghosts. No, I, well, but here's the thing. Or you're just I, curious. I, I'm very curious. I've had very strange experiences. Um, but I don't, think as, as, I don't think it's as simple as 
we're experiencing the, you know, consciousness of uh, someone who died in that space and they're haunting it. I don't necessarily think it's that simple. And, uh, you know, I think it could be a couple things. You know, what if, what if in, you know, a lot of haunted houses, they're old and decrepit. What if people are exposing themselves to some mold, which is causing them to hallucinate? <laughs> you know, magic mushrooms make you hallucinate. You're right. What if long-term exposure to mold well, can do that? Long-term even short-term exposure to mold yeah. can kill you. Yeah, exactly. People die of sick house. Yes. I mean, if you ever see black on the wall... <laughs> Get out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, scary yeah. stuff. So that's like one bucket. The other bucket is like, what if there is some unknown, undetected energy, which when you're exposed to it, kind of like a electromagnetic frequency, you experience hallucinations. You know, that is one thing I think is t entirely plausible. You know, we did What's that? Me, so, like, think about... What causes a hallucination? What if... Okay, so think about people that live under power lines. And then they get... They have a lot of electromagnetic yeah. exposure. They'll experience headaches. They'll experience physical symptoms. What if there is some energy spectrum out there we just yeah. don't know exists? No, it could be. And when you're exposed to it, you will have some kind of hallucination. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, I mean, it's... and <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Great to see you. <laughs> really and we're done. That's why I brought you in here. Um, but then there is that thing where people yes. are like, I saw my dad walk in the room and he's been dead 15 years. Right. I mean, could it be uh, a uh, trick? I guess. But, you know, I don't want to be that guy who says, I, I can't tell how... You, well, of course you can't tell how to do the trick, or else yeah. you'd be the magician. But there are some things, like, there are mentalist acts, mm -hmm. like work, like um, Barbara Streisand use, uses one in her concerts. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Like, he comes out in the middle and does 20 minutes, like, and... Again, I don't want to be, oh, I can't tell... But really, how would he? How could you do this? He just there are people in the audience. Yeah. You could, no one is that good an actor. Yeah. You can tell they're not, and he seems to know things that they are thinking that I don't know how they could be communicating this fast and have it written on the card already. It's just there's just too much. Yeah. I mean, there are scams that I get like uh, the gypsy, the fortune teller. Mm -hmm. Some of that is just um, suggestion. Uh, Yes, it's it's in that new movie, uh, Nightmare Alley. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? I have not. <laughs> but I know I know there's a new movie called Nightmare Alley. <laughs> yeah, it's with Bradley Cooper. It's the, the guy who did the one about the fish fucker. Okay. You remember the, what was that called? Or she's fucking <laughs> fucking the fish. It was supposedly very. I don't know what it was. It wasn't boring. Oh, the fucking yes. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the shape this. of water. The shape Correct. of water. Correct. The that shape of water. That fucking movie was I, a joke. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I was not as bad as I thought it was be, but I was good. I was expecting something horrible. Uh, what what a glowing review that is! <laughs> <laughs> Bill Morris says, "Not as bad as I thought it would be." No, this guy's a good filmmaker. I mean, I'm probably not giving it enough. It's it's. I think that was better than um, allowing. Um, but this new one, I think, is quite good. He really stuck the landing, and it's about a guy in a circus, like in the '30s, mm -hmm. and. There's that element too of the, he's being trained by someone who does you know he he does a mentalist act yeah and he becomes big doing it I won't tell the whole movie but and a lot of it is with him he has no special powers he is just a master at noting you know someone comes in with a sailor hat you like the sea you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know just uh, just you know uh, you're smoking a joint you yeah. like weed <laughs> <laughs> yeah Johnny Carson used to do that character called El Moldo and he was like a psychic and he would have there's someone in the audience with an E in their name <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but they that's that's a scam yeah. but this guy talking to people 50 rows back yeah. and see and knowing having written on the card but I just don't know uh, how it's and it's just scary first of all to think that someone can read your mind yeah someone's just tuned differently you know i mean i i cannot play music for the life of me but my dad he's an amazing musician and he can write songs and whatever i can't fucking do that and right. for the life of me i could never go oh i could get on stage memorize a song and sing it and have it be 
near as perfect to the way it was recorded. Right. I can't do that. That's so far out of my realm I and I'm agree. related to that guy. Right. And so I think <laughs> there's like certain people out there that just have these weird gifts yes. that science can't really prove because it's so subjective. That one is a little easier to grasp, the music one. I, the music I, one, yes. But, but why certain people have that well, and others don't? Here's my question about the guy who, the mentalist guy, like, the real Bradley Cooper, the, who can do it like I've seen it done, that I can't really explain. If you could do that, mm -hmm. this is really the best way you can monetize that skill. <laughs> I knew a psychic you couldn't who won make the lottery more, twice. You can't think of, you're that smart, <laughs> but you can't think of a better way to make a lot of money on this rather rare and... I would think very valuable skill, maybe uh, to another corporation that right. was wondering what Pepsi was doing. A little I mean, corporate espionage. I, I mean, Putin couldn't use a person like this. It's anybody. I mean, yeah. this is the best way you can do it. Yeah. You can make money. That's what makes that suspicious to me. Yeah. I just well, I think it's well. I mean, you say Putin. I mean, look at Ra look at Rasputin. He he was uh, you know he claimed to be a psychic and he he controlled the czars before they got kicked out of Russia. Rasputin, yes, yeah. I remember his. I think his quote when he died was, uh, "They poisoned me, shot me, stabbed me, and drowned me, and then seeing how unpopular I was, I died from a broken heart." <laughs> uh, he was very witty, Rasputin. Yes. Not and so Putin. No, no. I always want to say, how about Putin on a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's, but you were there. I, w I was, yeah. Oh, I was just about there. burying the lead. Uh, Man, yeah. Jack, you got to stop smoking pot. <laughs> okay, I, I, I was Ukraine. Just, I was just in Ukraine, yeah. You're so modest. Uh, well, you know. I, I, was, do, like, I was doing charitable work. I don't, I don't think you should flaunt charitable work. Okay, but can I hear about sure it? Sure, you can. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Wh wh when did you get back? Where, I got where, back on. I got back Sunday night. Okay. So hopefully. Okay. So you've just been okay. back four days. Yeah. And you're doing this. God bless you. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying this because that's a rapidly changing situation. Yeah. Hopefully, when people are hearing us talk about this, it's all a, over. It's in a better situation yeah. than certainly something's got to be better than having your apartment bombed. Yes. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, listen, I will say this. I, w I went in over the Romanian side. Um, I was, uh, I was there working with an organization that was trying to extract, um, special needs orphans. Uh, it sounds like a bad pickup line. Like I was trying to rescue special needs orphans I, out of a war-torn country. Just, uh, <laughs> boy, I don't want to get behind you online at the pearly gates. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, yeah. I'm I not... knew that guy from the Playboy Man. <laughs> Let me tell you about his younger days, because he wasn't so much of a fucking hero back then. Let me tell you. It's, it sounds a lot more heroic than it actually was when I was there, um, just because of the evolving nature of war, like, or devolving. Um, they, they now are extracting the kids when I was there, we were having a hard time finding them, but I did, we were in, in Ukraine. This is an organization you've been in before this? I had worked with a part of it. It was two organizations that kind of came together. Okay. Um, and the one that I was with. And they was, called you and said, we need help in this particular. They, I reached out to them cause I'm, I'm, I'm an EMT as well. And I, uh, What's that? uh like emergency med medical technician, oh. so like ambulance kind of stuff. Um, done a cool. bit of that. Good guy to have here at Club Rent. Right there, you go. I can, I can keep, I can keep you alive until the paramedics come. <laughs> Great. I love making new friends. Um, okay, so how many days were you there? I was there seven days. In Kiev? Uh, I was no, I wasn't in Kiev. I was on the west, uh, western side of the country. I see. Okay. So I was based in Romania, and we were going in and out of. So of was there fighting there? Or have they been gotten there? The yet? the the closest uh, uh, a strike hit while I was there was about fifty kilometers away. So far enough to where I felt okay. Still fucking hairy. Yeah. I would have not. I would not have slept for one minute. It was okay. I mean, I didn't sleep in Ukraine. We slept in Romania. And the hotel was okay. It was someone's house that because everyone just someone's opened up. house, yeah, like this, an Airbnb. Yeah, just... kind of. Yeah, a refugee oh, Airbnb wow. kind of vibe. See, I admire that so much. A celebrity who you know is not afraid to rough it. It's, I mean, that's as rough as it gets. Yeah. I mean, it was. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm so not the person that like 
if I believe in something, I'll go do it. I won't post a fucking picture That's on awesome. Instagram and be like, oh. I'm no, not, not many. I mean, Sean Penn is like number one on my list of celebrities who walk the walk. Yeah. That motherfucker, he is a man of action. He's, he's, he's like the, he, remember yeah. that commercial, the most interesting myth? I mean, he really <laughs> got, he was there. Yeah, yeah. He's everywhere. Yeah, I, I was. <laughs> He's I, was in Haiti, I was in Haiti. He gets with him. people out of prison, and he really does it. Remember the El Chapo thing? Yep. The, Fuck. And the hurricane. See, I like, couldn't find him, but he could. He's, he's, <laughs> he's like a real life Batman or some shit. Yeah. Um, but few do that. I yeah. Mean, and he, there's he's, a lot of ta- George Clooney. I know has gone to Darfur. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not a you know. You need a connecting flight to get there. That's, <laughs> that's no. Yeah, there's no Burbank right too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna use being over sixty as an excuse why I can't be. Uh, I can't. I can't. I have. Uh, I can't. But but you provide a service in another way. Exactly my. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> you help enlighten I mean, people. You, well, you know what? There's also an old saying: Don't pity the martyr. He likes his job. Bob, yeah. And that's it. If you if you uh, are suited to whatever way you're suited to serve, and you have to know. Yeah. And, you know, if you're, if you're going to be, like, impossibly uncomfortable, you can't do it. Mm. You're just not built for it. So, yeah. you know, I'm not built for it. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I just never like travel. I'm telling you, even when I traveled in, in the highest class places, in the best European capitals... I was still kind of miserable because I never really sleep. Yeah. And I, the jet lag, I never recover from it. There's always something I want. Mm-hmm. I mean, travel can be great. It can also be like trying to peel an orange with a can opener at two in the morning <laughs> and just wanting to go home. And that's me. I just yeah. want to go home. You, you know, I have, uh, I have this saying with my fiance, I just want to be comfortable. That's it. I just want to be comfortable. Now, what about tra- what about this kind of ridiculous traveling that you do now that you're going to be married? I, well, I travel a lot. Yeah, it's it's just kind of it's does what I've go always with, done. Or mm, it... you'll come out a little bit, you know, and the what kids. Will... She, you must have talked about this. Oh, what going to going to Ukraine? No, it, her, no. The idea that you travel and you're going to be the husband, and yeah. is she, you must have talked about. Are you coming with me? Yeah. She, Can I come with you? We would it be better if I didn't come with you? Because you know, yeah. absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's a, it's a bit of both. She, when I'm filming, she'll come out with me on the road when I'm doing ghost hunt stuff. I, when I, when I did the show with my dad, my, my kids would always come out because it was. Can um, I make a suggestion? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've said this before, but I'm going to say that it always bears repeating. No matter who the two people are, mm-hmm. I believe there are only so many fucks in the can. Yep. Look at that. I, I made a sale <laughs> right away. And then you're always trying to get a couple. Of them. So my suggestion would be is when you do your thing, don't take her. Save. <laughs> Spread it out. <laughs> Don't burn it out. You probably burned out a lot of it already. You, you, <laughs> kids, you fell in love, and you're probably like jumping all over each other all the time. Spread it out. Okay. <laughs> leave, leave, leave a. You know, it's the... like I uh, forget the writer. I think it was Hemingway or somebody who said he would always like. Uh, he would quit writing for the day. He would leave. He'd leave something like half of a sentence in the typewriter. So that he came back to it. You know? Oh, interesting. Leave something in the typewriter. Okay, leave something in the typewriter. That's an interesting, <laughs> yeah, an interesting theory. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. And you know, we, we, she does not travel everywhere with me. Um, but yeah, I'm, you know, I think because people are, might be on something there, Bill. Not. <laughs> I'm just telling you, bro. <laughs> um, because like people who like work and play together. Yeah. Oh, it rarely ends well. <laughs> rarely ends well. <laughs> Don't you think it's a poor idea? Yeah, I it just I I I will I don't think I would ever work with my partner in that capacity, like full time. A little project here and there, like we're we're redoing a house right now together, and that's that's working together, and that's that's about as much as well. Redoing a house is domestic, and I can see how that that could be kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever redone a house with a woman, Bill? No, but I moved into one with one oh, okay. once, and it was 1992. Ah. And it was, uh, I remember we had a boombox player, I guess before we got the, the stereo system in or something, 
And uh, the album of choice while we were unpacking was Madonna's Erotica. Oh, okay. Do you know that album? Uh, I, I, I know of it. I'm, yeah. I can't say I've Thanks. listened to it a whole bunch. It's really good. Yeah. I mean, Madonna never struck me as like, like the warmest person in the world. But, man, you can't front on the, as far as making great oh, she records, is, yeah. especially dance records, yeah. you know, I mean, and well into the 21st century, yeah. when many of, you know, my idols of my youth, you know, either weren't working or, mm -hmm. you know, they just lost the magic touch. Not all of them, but um, it's hard. It's hard to be a, I mean, your father's still... Yeah, he still fucking like goes out and fucking yeah sings paranoid and yeah yeah <laughs> I know when COVID do was you, around do you and, go oh yeah I mean I've been to thousands I mean I've been to so many of his concerts <laughs> uh, <laughs> enjoyably or? yeah it's great it yeah, is. especially you know I think the older now, where do you I go, where are you during the concert I'm I'm backstage floating around backstage I'll go out, but I'll go out to front of house and you know. So that's my my thing. I, if I'm gonna watch a show, I want to be in, like as close to the mixing desk as possible. Really? Yeah, because that's that's where that's where the uh, it's the the concert is is mixed to the desk. So the sound guy out there who's you know make, you know making it sound good, he's making it sound good to his position. So if you're not right where he is. It sounds like shit. But why is that interesting to you more than like the show itself? What, where I sit and watch it? Because because you've seen it a million. Yeah, and I want to. If I'm going to watch it, I'm like, all right, I want to hear. I want to hear it at its best. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Who else do you watch? Who Who else is on your playlist? Oh, I'm. I mean, if I'm going to go to a show, which I don't, I don't go to many shows anymore. I'm like, I've. That's another one where you can you have only so many shows in the can. <laughs> Before it, before it's just like, all right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm like, I'll, it's, it's gotta be someone I really love. Like, I love Tool. That's like, Tool. Tool. Great band. I, I know other people who say that. It's one of the best get, live shows you could ever go to. But it's heavy metal, right? Yeah, it's very, heavy, but it's very, it's cerebral heavy metal. It's not. Well, I gotta give them a shot. I, I must say that I was turned off by the name. <laughs> it just sounded douchey. Tool. But that's like, why they named it Tool. I'm sure they did. You know, sometimes you can be, as the British say, too clever by hat. <laughs> All right, I have to uh, go back to my day job. What a pleasure to yeah, get to it's know you. It's been great, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't it? Club. What else would you have done? Like, I, nothing good. I would have gone home and probably yes. complained about the construction of my house. Yeah.